So it was my dad's fault. That, I, it was my dad's fault we didn't go on good holidays. Well, we never went on good holidays because he was afraid of flying. As one of those people go, it's not natural, is it? If men are fly, we'd have wings, but that's for birds. That's not for humans. That's a terrible argument, isn't it? That's like going, do you want a glass of wine? No, because I can't open the bottle because I haven't got my own curly finger. <laughs> We, every year, right, we'd either go camping or narrowboating. Right? Most families go away to get away from it. The it we were getting away from was comfort and happiness. <laughs> I, uh, we went narrowboating in Birmingham. Birmingham, yeah, because my dad said, oh, it's perfect for narrowboating because it's actually got more miles of canal than Venice, which implies he'd considered a holiday to Venice, <laughs> but felt it probably wasn't canally enough for his tastes. <laughs> We went on the, on the narrowboat. I don't know if you've been on a narrowboat. If you haven't been on a narrowboat, what it is, it's a boat that is so shit <laughs> that its main selling point is that it's narrow. <laughs> no one cares about the width of your boat. Your boat is either narrow enough to fit in a river, that is a boat, or it is too wide, that is a bridge. <laughs> and what they've done with this boat, right, is, uh, that's famous for being narrow, is they've decided to put a house in it. And the way they've done that is everything folds into something else. So make a cup of tea in the morning. It's like the worst Transformers movie you have ever seen. <laughs> yeah, well, first I'll get up and fold up my bed, because that is also the kettle. <laughs> then I'll get my milk from my fridge come walk-in wardrobe. Where's my mug? My sister is having a bath in it. <laughs> we go to gift shops on holiday, and I go, we don't know. It's rubbish, isn't it? And my dad goes, oh, we should buy people some things to show them we've been to Birmingham. <laughs> so I think they'll believe us. I think we're going to get back and we've gone, we've just been to Birmingham. Bullshit, mate. <laughs> Unless you've got a tea towel, I'm not buying that tall story. <laughs> Everything in childhood is just, well, you're just made to do things. This was the thing I hated the most. Being made to do things, going outside, because that was, uh, you're always made to do the Outward bounds and stuff. Like when I was 10, my school was raising money, right, for the local church roof, because it's always the church roof. I don't know what the problem is with the church roofs. <laughs> It's not like they've gone, well, you go in and they go, well, the roof's fucked. We've just installed a hot tub, so uh, <laughs> come and praise the Lord in there, yeah? <laughs> we all had to do different things. And me and my best friend Thomas decided what we were going to do is we're going to walk the three miles to our nearest market town wearing Wellington boots full of custard, right? And we thought this will be a good thing, and it would have been a good thing, but for one small issue, which was when preparing the custard for the Wellington boots, my mum didn't think that we might want it served at a lower temperature. <laughs> You know, serve on a fucking apple crumble. <laughs> I tell you now, there are a few things in your life more terrifying than seeing a Wellington boot steaming <laughs> like the entrance to stars in their eyes. <laughs> so I'm not putting my foot in there, that's boiling hot. My mum said, isn't that the challenge? No, that is not the fucking challenge. <laughs> when did third degree burns become the challenge? <laughs> don't know if you ever put your foot in a Wellington boot or boiling hot custard. A few of you will have. You don't need to fess up now, right? Similar to a hot bath. With a hot bath, it goes something like this. That is too hot. <laughs> With a Wellington boot of boiling hot custard, more like this. That is too hot. And suctioned on. <laughs> it's like a medieval torture devised by the Chuckle Brothers. <laughs> you know, this is doubly humiliating, because I've had to go in three times to break the skin on the custard. <laughs> but worse than that for forcing you to go outside was a thing when you're a teenager called the Duke of Edinburgh Award. Yeah, that was bullshit. They said, you do this and it'll help you get a job in later life. And then you grow up and it turns out that camping is not a transferable skill. <laughs> we all did this, right? Me and my mates when we were 16. And we weren't very cool, to give you an idea, right? None of us had kissed a girl by this point, right? And then we got out on the moors, we're all unpacking. And this was when I noticed that my friend Thomas had packed a condom. <laughs> As if he'd gone, well, I haven't any luck with the 700 girls at my school, but... Once I hit this desolate moorland, I imagine my luck will be in. <laughs> I mean, either that, I presume the award was so well regarded that the moment he crossed the finish line, women would just be throwing themselves at him. <laughs> going, take off your cagoule, I want you here and now. <laughs> well, if you're not going to take it off, at least zip the hood into the collar, I'm not a slag. <laughs> Unless you're hoping to get lucky with a bull in a field, you haven't got a fucking hope. <laughs> I said, why have you packed that? He said, oh, no, it's not because of that. He said, it's because I've read in a survival book that you can fill a condom with water up to the size of a telephone box. And I said, it's knowing information like that that shows why you've never kissed a girl in the first place. <laughs> also, how much help is that going to be on a 35-mile hike? 
Or if you bump into someone in yoga, you're right, Steve, what the fuck is that? <laughs> this is just my aqua sheath, actually. Do you want a glass? <laughs> I mean, no, I don't, to be honest. I thought you were being followed by the thing from the prisoner. <laughs> but my main question, why does a condom need to go that big in the first place? If you need a condom to go that big, seek medical advice. <laughs> If you are going to a girl, if it sounds like I'm about to come, run for your fucking life. <laughs> there is a reason I've opened the window. It's going to be like a tsunami down there. Clear the area. <laughs> All of these bad, but none as bad as the worst thing that happened to me in my childhood in my life, which was when I went on a school trip to Alton Towers when I was 16. Now, I was not used to rides like at Alton Towers. I was Because I, I, I grew up in Devon. We didn't have good theme parks in Devon, to give you an idea of the level of theme park in Devon. I was once on the ghost train when I was a child, and I saw a skeleton eating his lunch. <laughs> well, we've all had to eat at our desk, but that is taking the piss, isn't it? <laughs> also, an apple on a Rivita. Have a lasagna, mate. You're a skeleton. You don't need to diet. <laughs> but we went on a ride called the Black Hole. If you have not been on the Black Hole, right, what it is, it's a ride that is not very fast, so because it, it is in the dark. That is the thrill. So you don't have these things that come and hold you in. Instead, you go two to a cart, not next to each other. That'd be too easy instead. One of you, right, has to sit at the back, right, of the cart with your legs out like that. And then the other one, right, has to cushion in between the legs. Facing forwards as well, obviously. Facing backwards, that'd be a very different ride indeed. <laughs> but are you ready to ride missionary? No, I'm going to give it a miss, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> but that is awkward, right, for a minute, which is how long it's meant to last. We broke down on the black hole. 20 minutes we were there. <laughs> After about three minutes, they brought the lights up. Oh, you know when they bring the lights up at a nightclub and you go, what the fuck am I doing and with who? <laughs> Never have I been spooning my best mate. Because <laughs> you're basically some Radox and an Enya CD away from it being a sexy bath. <laughs> you go, I mean, it's like something from Ghost. I mean, you might as well bring the lights up, have a Potter's wheel and play Unchained Melody. I know I'm not dead, but I wish I fucking was, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> After about ten minutes, they made an announcement and said, please be aware, the black hole has broken down. No shit! <laughs> no one's saying, well, this is a weird ride, isn't it? And I wanted to talk to Thomas, but I thought that'd be basically whispering into his ear. <laughs> and even though there is no sexual attraction, all this going through your head for 20 minutes is, do not get an erection now. <laughs> Because if you do, your friendship will never last. <laughs> 20 minutes right near the end, a guy carriage behind us went, come on, guys, cheer up, Blitz Spirit, let's have a sing-song. No, let's not have a fucking sing-song. Even though, to be fair, I'm in the perfect position to do oops upside your head. <laughs> Hermes with Apollo, uh, you have been absolutely lovely. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. <laughs> My name's Jonathan Kim. See you again. Cheers. Good night. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming. I, uh, I, I, I thought, as it's my uh, first DVD, I should end by doing um, the oldest piece of material I've got. <laughs> now, I wrote this when I moved to London, because when I moved to London, I was still doing all the touristy things. I used uh, Madame Two Swords. I don't know if any of you have been to this wax apocalypse. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know at Madame Two Swords, they have a waxwork of Adolf Hitler. I'm shocked. I turned to my tour guide and said, is that Hitler? I went to check it wasn't Chaplin. Don't make a dick out of myself. <laughs> so, is that Hitler? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, that man killed 11 million people. I don't think that is appropriate. And he said, well, the thing is, sir, not all of our waxworks are going to be popular with everyone. <laughs> For instance, I don't like Sting. <laughs> I said, I think they've committed very different crimes, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> No, I'm not a huge fan of the police myself, but I do prefer them to the Nazis. <laughs> My understanding, Madam Two Swords, correct me if I'm wrong, is you get popular, they make a waxwork of you. You get unpopular, they melt it down. How unpopular does Hitler need to get? <laughs> Spare a thought for Annika Rice. One bad series of challenge, Annika. She was a set of candles. 
If you do go to Madame Tussauds, right, do not get the guided tour, because in a museum of lookalikes, a guided tour, it is fucking pointless. <laughs> All they can do is point to names. Look at that one there, that's Miley Cyrus. And you've got two options. You can either go... Yes, it is. <laughs> or you can go... Who the fuck is Miley Cyrus? <laughs> and we walk around at one point, they went, this one here is Jack the Ripper. I said, Jack the Ripper? A man primarily famous for never being seen or recognised. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that doesn't look like Jack the Ripper. What I'm saying is if it does, perhaps the people you're showing shouldn't be disinterested tourists, but the police. <laughs> said, well, you've already established this. I'm not a fan of the police. I said, not that police. <laughs> we did two laps. We came back to Hitler for a second time. He's no longer stood alone, right? He's now stood with an old woman stood next to him, smiling with her arm around him, having her photo taken. For me, that is only morally right if A, she's Jewish, and B, she is going, well, he is fucking hating this. <laughs> I mean, this is the last thing he needs. <laughs> right, let's go and get Mel Gibson. <laughs> uh, Hammersmith, you have been absolutely lovely. Thank you so much. Um, Uh, it's been a genuine joy to play to so many of you. Thank you so much for coming out. It genuinely means the world to me. Hope to see you again. Thank you very much. My name is Joshua Cruz. Cheers. Good night. <laughs> I was working on my core strength. You've been working out, not just sleeping on a single bed. I'm ripped.